earlier, uh, told me that the meeting was going to be, um, was not going to have an in-person option. So again, be that as it may, we're gonna carry on um, and move to the meeting agenda overview with Dr. Calvin King, who is the president and facilitator for the Arkansas Land and Community Development Corporation. Dr. King. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Crockett. Let me say, first of all, <clears throat> express my appreciation to all of those particular resource people who are, who are here present uh, to participate in this particular uh, meeting. And again, things will happen. Uh, as those saying goes, if anything can go wrong, it will. Uh, one of the things that we are, have moved toward and we're moving toward now is that as we do our meetings and we have our conversations, particular conversations back uh, with the resource people, uh, be it in a venue where you have, have a both a, a in-person uh, audience. And we had a very good meeting in Nashville, you know, last week, uh, both had, had in-person and virtual participation. But when we're uh, starting, uh, beginning this afternoon, as we have our meeting, then we will re broadcast these meetings back to our Facebook and we'll link back and get that back out to the community residents as we move toward, uh, as we say outreach to try to make sure that we can, that we can diversify ourselves in a manner uh, where we can actually reach the community and get the communication out and get the communication out. Our intention is that from tonight's meeting, this afternoon's meeting, and, and other meetings that we've done, not only will we will we go to Facebook with it, we'll be able to link that back to our website and we'll republish information back to the public on how they can go to the website and listen to uh, the particular meeting, the events and what the agenda has consisted of and the various uh, uh, resource people who are participating in the information that's being provided. Now, as we are, we are here this, this evening, and it, it, the purpose of this is one, it, it's outreach, and it's to communicate, the intention is to communicate uh, back into the Riceville area, as well as the other surrounding community area, uh, the various type of resources that's available uh, through USDA, and as we say, one USDA, uh, as it relates to rural and urban community economic development. And that's through both conservation program services, uh, Farm Service Agency and USDA Rural Development and Forestry Services. And I say forestry services because forestry is a very key partner uh, back with uh, Natural Resources and Conservation Services in doing conservation forestry type of practices. That's one. And of course, they have a number of other programs aware as well. So that, that's uh, a very, very quick summary our purpose while we're here, we met with the community residents along with elected officials in the in the Riceville area, uh, and uh, based on you know the invitation and how we were supposed to be back there in person, some in person as well as virtually uh, this afternoon. We distributed quite a bit of information too, and it basically it was a mostly hard copy and not targeted mail into the community. Uh, so. Uh, as, as we move forward, you know, with the uh, with the agenda uh, for this evening, again, my expression of appreciation of all the resource people. Uh, this particular meeting has been recorded. It will be go back to a rebroadcast process, back to Facebook, back to the website, as well as you know, uh, out to others so to allow uh, people to have access to and to receive the information uh, that we are, we are moving toward getting getting out. I'm going to now turn it over to Mr. Mr. Albert Jones, and he's going to give you a quick summary of the uh, organization of our mission, uh, what we're all about in our program service delivery. Mr. Jones. Thank you, Dr. King. Again, my name is Albert Jones. I'm the farm director. The mission for Arkansas Lands Community Development Corporation is to provide advocacy, outreach, technical assistance and training to limited resource small farmers and all rural residents to alleviate poverty and chance sustainable farming and strengthen communities. 
economic sustainability and workforce readiness. ALCDC provides services and programs are available without regard to age, race, religion, gender, or physical handicap. Uh, nice, nice on the agenda. And let, let me mention one thing. This is urban and rural, urban and rural agriculture. Uh, uh, and we'll talk more about that. And I know our resource people will talk more about it tonight. And those who are participating uh, in this particular, uh, on this particular agenda. Next we have is, is Mr. Uh, Kennard Williams. And I think I saw Mr. Peer on, Mr. Alvin Peer. So I don't know if that means that Mr. Williams is not on. Uh, will you be presenting, Mr. Peer? There's Kennard. There's Kennard. Hey, Doc, Kennard's on there. There's Doc. Uh, Kennard. There he is. Okay, yes, Mr. Kennard, with us? There he is. Okay. All right, we're going to turn it over to Mr. Wheaton at this point with Natural Resource Conservation Service. Good to see you, Mr. Wheaton. Good to be here, Mr. King. Uh, for those that do not know me, I'm Kennard Williams. Uh, I work with the Natural Resource Conservation Service. Can you hear me? Uh, Mr. Wheaton, we can't hear you. Are you yes. muted? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can. I can hear. Can everyone else out there hear? Yes, can I you hear can me, hear. Mr. King? Can't hear you. Can okay, you hear me, Dr. Mr. King? Dr. King, um, if Mike and you all, can you check the connection there? No, um, okay, we, we can hear you, Mr. Williams. We can hear you. All right. Just let me know when y'all ready for me to go. You got it, Mr. Williams. Okay. All right. Um, go ahead. Uh, thank y'all for inviting me. Uh, what do you say, Mr. King? You got it. Go ahead. All right. Okay. All right. I uh, I work with NRCS, uh, Natural Resource Conservation Service in Pulaski County. Uh, I'm the district conservation here in uh, in Pulaski. Uh, I guess uh, I've been charged of three topics. One is uh, conservation service program opportunities uh, for NRCS is the first one on the list. Uh, as uh, well, as you know, our mission statement, we deliver conservation solution on agriculture. Uh, producers can protect natural resources and feed a growing world. Uh, the things that we do for uh, for our producers and then what we try to provide for our producers. Uh, everything that we do, we try to address some type of resource concern. And I'm assuming that the resource concern in this uh, particular matter is small limited resource farmers and uh, trying to do uh, agriculture or, or help on small items or small project items on small usage of land. Uh, and we do have several practices on the EQIP program. I know we do have some other programs like CRP uh, Paul may talk about a little bit about those that program, but uh, a lot of our work we do uh, under uh, Equip. Uh, one of our big biggest rural um, practices we do is high tunnel seasonal high tunnel. I know also it is also talk about micro urban uh, farming on on part number three for us, and that's what we do a lot in Pulaski County for urban farming. We do a lot of high tunnel. And to address that resource concern, we're trying to address the extended uh, period of, of produce and uh, fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, we do have some projects going on in Pulaski County to trying to address some, some of the food desert areas uh, in Pulaski County to provide fresh fruit and vegetables, uh, uh, vegetables in those areas. And what the high tunnel se season high tunnel does, it actually uh, extend the growing period, growing season. Um, the, uh, the program on the EQIP, it does allow uh, the cost share on that component, but you also have to look at the micro irrigation system part of it because you have to have water to grow produce. Uh, if that you're looking at that part of it, uh, and we do have some small farmers that we do some pasture uh, practices as well. Uh, there may be some water tanks and some pasture establishments. 
Uh, but back to your seasonal high tunnel, we would do pay on the mulching and pay on the uh, 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 the high tunnel. But the very first step that we need to do uh, to get our participants and our and our landowners, our participants, are to get them a conservation plan. You have them; they need to come in and do a conservation plan, and we need to actually evaluate the property and where their location and what they want to do. Uh, and what that does, it allows us to see their property, and we may have some um, other uh, resource concerns that may need to be addressed that they're not actually looking at at that time. So a field visit start is to start do a conservation plan that that'll cover that park that we actually come out and evaluate and put your plan together to get started before you actually sign up for the equip <clears throat> program. Um, when you start looking at the different um, uh, once we do that plan and we start looking at the different program, but we will also look at uh, things of uh, 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 are you in the system? Because we also on this list is for number two is uh, air property challenges for USDA program services. Uh, you have to have control of land uh, on that property. And you, we do, I have ran into some issues where it may be air property, uh, where it may limit you to what we can do. We still can provide you technical assistance, but you may not be able to pro, uh, uh, apply for equip or USDA programs through NRCS until we actually determine who can actually sign for that property or who, who actually have a lease of that property under that air property. So those are things that, uh, that, that can stop or hold you up or hinder you from actually signing up at that time. But we still provide that technical assistance uh, part of it. But once you uh, have control, if you don't own it, if it, family members own it, and then you actually get everybody and you actually have a lease on it, uh, it you got to start off, see if you got a farm number, track number. Uh, if you don't have a farm number, track number, we have to start with that process. You have to start that process with Farm Service Agency, uh, with Mr. Paul and them, uh, which is our service centers out of Lone Oaks. They also serve Pulaski County. Um, you had to get a farm number, track number, and you also have to do uh, 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 AGI form is the adjusted gross income, which states that you make less than 900000 a year. You also have to do a 1026, where that covers your highly erodible land and your wetland issues uh, that's covered under the 85 uh, Compliance Act. Uh, after that part of it, and you get all, everything established, and then we can actually come in, you can start uh, signing up for those programs uh, to qualify for those program on EQIP, uh, any other program that we may have uh, on EQIP. Um, those three items and topics that, uh, that, that I was, that I, that I was doing, I actually covered. Dude, I'm, I'm going to put it out there and see if are there are any particular questions that people may have, uh, how to do or what to do or where to come to. Mm -hmm. Also, I need to put out there that I am located in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, Irish Bank building, uh, here in Northern Little Rock, um, and that my address is, uh, 404 McCain Boulevard, which is in North Little Rock. And, and we do, even though with COVID going on, we will do appointments. Uh, so, uh, and I do prefer to come out in the field in which we can stay a distance and I also can look at the property all at the same time. Uh, so are there any questions for me at this time? Mr. Williams, if you could um, hang on until the end of our seminar and okay. that way we can, hold everybody's questions to the very end. And guys okay. out there that are, are participating, if you could put your uh, questions in that chat box at the bottom and or write them down as we go um, or, and put them in there um, as they come along, we would answer those at the end of the seminar, okay? Okay, all right. All no right, problem. thank you. Great job, Mr. Kennard. We appreciate your attendance as well. Again, um, very good information. And at this time, we're going to move into work session two, and that's going to be with um, the USDA Farm Service Agency. And I believe we have Mr. Casey, who's on, uh, representing for Pulaski County. Are you there, Mr. Casey? Yes, ma'am, I am. Perfect. And I believe you had some slides, did you not? Yes, and I'll... Okay share my screen now and hopefully things will work out. Okay. At this time, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the floor over to you. Okay. So, 
Does the slides show up? Yes, sir. Perfect. Okay. All righty. Uh, as um, Ms. Crockett mentioned, I'm with the Farm Service Agency in, I'm stationed in Lone Oak and the Lone Oak Farm Service Agency handles the, the Farm Service Agency business for both Lone Oak and Pulaski counties. And so um, many times when I speak, I'll, I'll call us the Lone Oak Pulaski FSA. And, uh, and obviously, as Kennard mentioned, his office is in Pulaski County. We also have an NRCS office in Lone Oak, well, and they handle Lone Oak County. And the, the Farm Service Agency provides uh, programs and loans to help farmers and ranchers and, and ag partner organizations provide food, fuel, and fiber uh, to millions of people worldwide. And today I'm gonna focus on uh, or touch the highlights on new and beginning farmers and ranchers. Uh, we'll, we'll touch on the farm programs and farm loan programs available through FSA. And then at the end, I'll give some general updates and where to go for more information. So as far as beginning farmers and ranchers go, the USDA's definition of a beginning farmer and rancher is, is an individual or an entity that has been farming or ranching for less than 10 years. And while it's not always the case, many of our programs offer additional assistance for beginning farmers and ranchers. And in, in working with the FSA, the first step would be to contact the local office. And our, our, our number is 501-676-5116, extension number two. And, and that, that number will be uh, on the slide at the end of the presentation. And even if you plan on coming to the office, it's, it's best to call first because we can talk to you over the phone and, and, and probably get just a little bit of information from you. What's your vision for the land? What are you hoping to do? Your owner, your operator? And, and that'll allow us to uh, get things prepared for when you show up. And, and also it, it may change uh, what, what you'll be doing when you come here. And so it's always good to start everything with a call to the local office. And uh, if, if there is someone who does not speak English, while we don't have any non-English speakers here in the local office, we do have access to translation services. So that should not be a hindrance. And in working with the Farm Service Agency, one of the first things to do is, uh, and it, it's called two different things. It may be called obtaining a farm number or registering with the FSA. And almost every program offered by both FSA and now NRCS requires us to, to, to put someone on a farm or to get them a farm number. And, and Kennard mentioned the EQIP program, the Environmental Quality Incentive Program. And we do, we do issue quite a few farm numbers for uh, beginning farmers and ranchers who are entering into uh, the EQIP program. And there's no minimum acreage to register as a farm. We, we have some farms drawn out that may be less than a, a half acre. And when, when starting with us, uh, when obtaining a, a new farm number, the, one of the, the first thing we'll want, need to see is a deed or, or a survey plat if you're a landowner. And if, if you're, you're an operator, so if you don't own the land, but you're farming it, then we'll need a lease. And uh, in, in between the deed and the lease, the deed or the lease, we'll be able to identify the piece of land that you're on. And then, uh, and then if it's an individual, we need a social security number. If it's an entity, we need the tax identification number. And then as we go through the process, There'll be other eligibility documents. If it's an entity, we're gonna need some organizational uh, documents to see who's in the organization and, and, uh, and, and how it's run. And then once, once we get the uh, farm number, then, then the door opens to uh, get into other programs and, and to be able to see what you may qualify for. And, uh, and then also, as far as the beginning and farmer ranchers go, uh, we do have a state coordinator for beginning and farmer, uh, beginning farmers and ranchers. Uh, and 
his name is Derek Johnson, and that's his email down at the bottom. And, and if you have you know, general questions and, and want to contact Derek, by all means, go ahead. If it's specific in signing up with the FSA, then the best bet would be to call us directly at, at the office. Now, within FSA, we have two divisions. Uh, one is the farm programs and the other is the farm loans. And in the farm programs, those consist of the safety net programs, the CRP or the conservation reserve program, um, and uh, the, the aerial field photography office, and then the market facilitation program. And then there's some other disaster programs as well. And we're gonna touch, I'm gonna touch on those. And then on the farm loan, in the farm loan side, uh, we have an uh, assortment of loans for direct uh, ownership uh, or, or direct loans for ownership and operating. Uh, we have guaranteed loans, micro loans, emergency loans, and youth loans as well. As far as the farm programs go, uh, probably one of the biggest ones we have is, is called ARC PLC, which is agriculture risk coverage and price loss coverage. And, and these programs uh, pay farmers when the, the actual revenue or actual prices on commodities uh, like corn, soybeans, wheat, rice, cotton, uh, when they drop below a certain level. And, and in order to, to qualify for that program, one of the things is that the farm that you're on have what's called base acres. And so there, there has to be a production history that was established on those farms. And if you're not sure if your farm qualifies for that program or, or not, you know, just call the office and we'll be able to tell you. The wildlife and her, or wildfire and hurricane indemnity program, it's called WIP. Uh, we, we just finished administering the 2018 and 19 programs for WIP. And both of those for Lone Oak and Pulaski were associated with uh, hurricanes and, and, uh, and, and a lot of rainfall. And so these, these disaster programs like the WIP, they, they usually take place after the fact. Uh, and, and sometimes as, as you can see with the 18 and 19 program that we just administered, it's, it's a couple of years after the fact. The next program is NAP. It's called, it's the Non-Insured Crop Disaster Assistance Program. And, and this is gonna be, um, mo most of the things that would fall under here would be uh, specialty crops, fruits and vegetables and nuts. And there, there's a host of products that are, are covered under NAP. And it's like an insurance program in that it offers financial uh, assistance when there's low yields or prevent planting if it's too wet to plant or, or other natural disasters. Uh, we have the livestock indemnity program. And in this one, we actually got some applications earlier this year from livestock producers who had calves. Uh, for the most part, it was calves that died during that extreme cold weather that we had in February. And then, uh, we, we have a emergency assistance for livestock, honeybees, and farm-raised fish. And again, this is a, a disaster program and it covers losses due to disease and, and cert, uh, certain weather events or conditions. And, um, and one that we're starting to get applications in on this are from honeybee producers. Uh, due, to the, due to the coronavirus programs that FSA administered, we've had several honeybee producers sign up with us and, and uh, honeybee producers have a unique set of challenges and uh, the ELAP program offers assistance to them as well as livestock and fish producers. The tree assistance program uh, covers uh, tree losses during natural disaster events. And then we also have the uh, MPP margin protection program for dairy. And, and that is, uh, again, it's, it's um, it's not an insurance program, but it, it offers assistance when the milk prices in relation to the uh, input prices for producing that milk, when, when they fall below a certain level, it kicks off of payments. So that's a quick overview of the 
farm programs, and now I'll touch on some of the farm loan programs that FSA has. The, the, the first ones on this slide, the direct operating loans, the micro loans, and the direct farm ownership loans, all three of these loans are directly uh, from, F, F, or from USDA. And the, the operating loan, the direct operating loans, as the name uh, indicates, it's, it's to cover operating expenses, uh, such as livestock, feed, seed, farm equipment, fuel, family living expenses, minor improvements or repairs to building, uh, and, and then just general operating expenses. It, it's limited to $400,000 and a seven-year payback. Uh, Microloans are loans that are under $50,000, and, and they are available to cover the operating expenses. And, and these microloans are easier to get, requires much less paperwork than the direct operating loan, but because they are small loans. And then we have direct farm ownership loans, which can be used for the purchase of land or to construct or Im improve um, building and, 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 a, and a, existing farm and ranch building. So, so this is uh, for, for capital projects. This loan is limited to 600,000 and a 40 year payback. The in the guaranteed loan program, those loans are actually taken out through a bank and FSA and the bank work together and the USDA backs the loan. So it's a, it's a way to help um, individuals or, or entities who can't get a loan on their own to get a loan from the bank. Youth loans are available uh, for, for youth age 10 to 20 who participate in 4-H, FFA, or, or similar uh, agricultural type organizations to finance education or income producing projects, uh, agriculture related projects. It's a $5,000 uh, loan limit in uh, maximum for seven years. And then several of the, the loans, they, they may have special uh, provisions for minority and women uh, farmers and ranchers in, in some of the FSA programs, not, uh, not, not, the loan pro, not the loans, FSA loans, but also the FSA loan programs have special provisions for uh, minority and women farmers and ranchers. Not, not all of them, but some of them do. We do have uh, loans for beginning farmers and ranchers, and uh, those, those provide credit opportunities for those who have uh, been in business for less than 10 years. And then we have emergency loans as well. And, and those loans are gonna, those loans come available when we have a, a presidential declared disaster. And so that'll, that'll be a, a major flood or drought or some other natural disaster. And you know, a particular county will be declared uh, eligible for emergency loans. And then those, are up to $500,000. Just some general updates on what's going on in FSA. We have two programs that opened up just a couple of weeks ago. The first one is pandemic assistance for timber haulers and harvesters. And so these are for the individuals or entities who harvest the timber and then haul it. And in order to be eligible, uh, the individual or the entity would have has, has to have had a 10% uh, loss in gross revenue but when, when they compare uh, their revenue from January 1st of 20 to December 1st of 20, when they compare that to the same time frame in 19. And so if, if you're a timber harvester or hauler and, and want to get more information, then call us the Application deadline is October the 15th. The second program that just opened up a couple of weeks ago is the pandemic assistance to livestock producers. And this is for animal losses. And, and this covers uh, those animals that had to be uh, euthanized or, or flocks or herds depopulated because they could not get them to the processor. And a common example would be a poultry producer or maybe a contract poultry producer or a contract hog producer 
and they when they, when their animals reach the weight they they the, the uh, processing facilities could not take them uh, and and so they ended up having to be euthanized we have gotten a, a couple of uh, applications for the timber haulers program uh, out of Pulaski and not, no, we haven't got any for for this one on uh, livestock producers yet uh, I mentioned earlier about the coronavirus food assistance program how we how it, it generated um, some uh, questions from beekeepers and that program is still going on and uh, there is no deadline set for that yet. It's been going on for some time now. And, and some of the eligible commodities are what's called price trigger commodities. And uh, th those were, uh, rice was one of the price triggers. And then, and then they had uh, flat rate crops, which would have been corn and soybeans. And so it's, it's based on, on the amount of acres planted in 2020. And then also on sales commodities. Uh, and this covered, uh, there, there were eligibility for livestock as well. And so if, if you produced an agricultural commodity in 2020 and, and you haven't inquired about this, uh, what we call CFAP2, the Coronavirus Food Assistance Program number two, then call us and we can talk with you and see if you have uh, eligible uh, commodities and then what it would take to apply. A couple of Conservation Reserve Program or CRP updates. Uh, we are accepting uh, applications for the, our CRP grasslands program, and that ends on August 20th, just in 10 days. We recently ended a general and a continuous signup. And so right now, this is the only uh, CRP uh, applications that we're accepting. And if you currently have a CRP contract and it's for uh, forested land, it's, if, so it's, if it's a contract covering uh, timberland, the USDA came out with a force management incentive. And so there are some enhanced payments to help cover the mid-management practices of tree, th tree thinning. And, uh, and you just, you can call us and we can see if you are eligible for that. And if so, uh, we can get the application made. In some instances, the incentive is, is significant. Uh, update on the farm loan side is uh, back in January, the USDA suspended the uh, work on past due debt collections and foreclosures for distressed borrower, bor borrowers. And so if you have a loan through USDA and you are having problems making payments, then contact the local office. And if you're in uh, Pulaski or Lone Oak, you, know, you would contact us. If you're listening from another county, then contact your local county office. And uh, there, there may be some options there for you. FSA has, uh, has also have uh, deadlines have been expended, extended for producers to respond to loan servicing actions, you know, including loan deferral consideration. And, and so if, if you have a bottom line is if you, if you have a loan, and you're having a problem, then call your FSA office. As part of the American Rescue Plan, uh, one of the aspects of that was the debt payment for the socially disadvantaged farmers or minority farmers. And that program is being challenged in the courts now. Uh, with that in mind, FSA is still taking applications. We're processing paperwork, we're answering questions. And so we are going through the process uh, of that program. Uh, the, the only thing that we cannot do is make payments. And, and so if you had a loan with FSA on January 1st and you are a minor minority, you, you should have received a, a letter from FSA by now. If you haven't, then contact contact the local office and we'll, uh, we'll help you figure out if that's something that you qualify for. And just a couple of tidbits on where to get information uh, and, and kind of how we're conducting business. Of course, 
uh, as with everyone, coronavirus has changed the way we conduct business. We're doing a lot by email and, and on the telephone now. And as of now, we are accepting appointments. We can have one producer in the office at a time. And so if you want to come in and see us, do business in person, we'd love to see you. Uh, just call us. We'll make an appointment. And we do require, whether you're vaccinated or not, we do require a mask at this time. And, uh, and if, if you're not in Lone Oak or Pulaski County, uh, the place to find out who your service center is, if you don't know, is to go to the farmers.gov website. You can also go to the USDA FSA website. So there, there, there are several uh, avenues to find out who your local service center is. And uh, I mentioned farmers.gov and that's the best place to go for the most up-to-date information on USDA programs. And from, from that, you can find out information on FSA programs, on FSA loans, how to sign up for any of these programs, how to contact your office, where your office is located, whole, whole nine yards. We do have this, uh, each year we have uh, elections for the county committee and Lone Oak and Pulaski, the county committee has five committee members, three representing Lone Oak, two representing Pulaski. And it, at, as this year, none of the Pulaski seats are up for re-election. We just have one seat up for re-election in uh, Lone Oak. And so if, if you're in Lone Oak County, uh, look for the, the ballot. It's, it's for LAA number two. And if you're in Pulaski County and uh, want to find out more about the county committee and uh, what district you're in and when that may be up for re-election, call us and uh, we'll, we'll help you out there. And we'd, we'd like to see uh, people, more people uh, apply to run for these positions. FSA does do two things to communicate. We have a, a newsletter and we put up to two newsletters out per month. And you can contact our office and, get, and we'll get your email and we can put you on the, on the newsletter list or you go to the farmers.gov and sign up that way. We also send out text alerts and we, we won't send more than two a month and, and they're, they're pretty short. And in order to subscribe to the text alerts, just text AR and then in parentheses, put the county that you're in and you text that to 372-669, that'll get you on our text um, message. And usually it's only upcoming deadlines or important things that we need people to know right then. And, and if it turns out that they, they don't do you any good, then uh, it's pretty easy to unsubscribe. Farm, farm or FSA Farm Plus is an online way to get information for your farm. It's something that you'd have to sign up for and you can contact us, we'll get you some more information about that. And then uh, ask USDA, uh, this is through the USDA website to get general information. It, it's, a, it's a chat that's available 24 seven. And if you have general questions, you can call up there. If, you, if it's specific questions about you or your county, best, best thing to do is, is to call us at the local office. And there's our, our phone number uh, down below. 501-676-5116, we're at extension number two. And so on, on behalf of Danny Hoots, the state executive director and Wanda O'Gwen, our outreach coordinator, I, I thank y'all for inviting us to participate in this program. And, and I hope to talk to some of y'all soon. Thank you so much again, Mr. Casey, for your information. <clears throat> and I like what you pointed out uh, in reference to micro urban farm loans, uh, which is one that we work very heavily with and we're pushing very hard right now um, because it has a very high success rate. And as he said, he mentioned before, it's uh, a lot more obtainable to get uh, rather than the traditional farm loan. So as a matter of fact, to show you how close to home it is, one of our board members, uh, Miss Mary Bones, is actually one of those recipients of a micro urban farm loan. 
and was even under the American uh, rescue plan was even forgiven for those loans. So uh, as he said before, uh, just because there is the current situation where it's on halt, still we encourage you to apply uh, so that we could have that on file and you would be one of the first ones to be accepted. So uh, moving forward, if all of my presenters, again, would place your information in the box as well as your questions, I do see your questions, uh, and we will get, the, get to those questions uh, coming up pretty soon. And speaking of, we're going to go ahead and transition over into our third work session, um, which will be presented by our own Dr. Calvin um, King, who has been a part of the ALCDC for over 40 years, guys. Um, he's going to cover rural business housing, rural community development, community facilities, water, sewer, energy, and e-technology. And of course, last but not least, I do see questions on there in reference to air property. So he will be covering that too. So without further ado, Dr. King, are you ready? Uh, yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm assuming that rural development is not on, and that's the reason that I'm doing this. Uh, if there's a rural development representative on, uh, then yes, I would. Uh, do do we have a rural development person on? I do not believe we have one on. I think we had down Miss uh, Maria Beard to um, as the partnership that we're going to be implementing uh, with Pulaski County uh, to speak on that. She's not. Okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll proceed. You can go ahead and proceed, Dr. King. Yes, sir. Well, yes, sir. I'm, I'm not with USDA rural development, but uh, you know we work with all the USDA agencies and try to have some familiarity with all their program areas, both the NRCS, uh, Farm Service Agency, uh, as well as USDA uh, rural development. Uh, rural development is one of the most comprehensive agencies that exist within USDA as far as a service provider, and particularly when you look at local communities. Let me emphasize this, as, as both FSA was presenting as well as the uh, NRCS uh, resource person, I want all those who, who are present to understand that USDA services, both with NRCS is available by way of the Farm Bill to urban agriculture now. Uh, as as Mr. William gave reference to, as well as Mr. Casey on Farm Service Agency on the micro loan program. And I'll come back to that uh, with a few questions that I'll have, as well as comments in reference to that presentation. Uh, the Rural Business Program at USDA uh, the Rural Development, I'm going to talk very briefly about uh, their loan program. They have both a loan guarantee program as well as a, a direct uh, program for business and industry lending. Uh, under USDA rural development. They also have a, what they call the Rural Business Enterprise. I'm not sure if they call it grant program now, but it is a grant program uh, that they can work uh, with uh, expanding or the creation of new business and job opportunities within a, a local area. Uh, the other area out of, out of the businesses of rural business and cooperatives, you know, they both make both grants as well as loans available to cooperatives in a lot of cases in a lot of parts of our, our country. And also in Arkansas, you do have cooperatives that receive the benefit of both the grant program as well as the cooperative, the cooperative program in general under USDA rural development. The housing program. Uh, housing program with uh, uh, rural development, they have both the multifamily housing program as well as the single family housing program, 502, 504 program, the single family, 515 and deal with the multifamily housing. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think I saw uh, possibly a 515 program that was in the uh, Ricefield area. We have participated uh, in the 515 program in creating affordable housing uh, along with uh, our tax credit, you know, development as a part of that, and doing syndication housing development for with the 515. Uh, we've also worked with individuals, and we still work and assist individuals uh, with uh, receiving the benefit of the resources for single family housing. And uh, of course, I always advise individuals if you are seeking uh, housing assistance, uh, uh, a loan from USDA. 
uh, for the housing program is to first do the the the, the pre-qualifying. I call the pre-qualifying application, which is a very short application. Uh, and one, it makes a determination of eligibility as well as how much loan uh, you would be able to qualify for, how much you could qualify for as far as lending assistance, loan assistance, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they also have grant programs to uh, work with the individuals and deal with renovation. Uh, grant programs up to $7,500, and this is for basically if you're layering that back with the weatherization program that may be being conducted by a community action agency or other other uh, uh, programs that uh, that may be being implemented in the local area, uh, but again, that one is seventy five seven thousand five hundred dollars on the grant program side. Uh, that could be uh, applied toward if you're able to get assistance from. Arkansas Development Finance Authority under their renovation program under home, which is up to $25,000. Uh, that has uh, has occurred in certain cases where you had nonprofit organization that did a uh, a partnership uh, with USDA Rural Development and Arkansas Development Finance Authority in putting together the package for renovation assistance based on uh, on what the cost cost of is going to be involved. Uh, based on that particular uh, house of, of the residents and what the needs were. $25,000 on that. Back of rural development, also they have a renovation loan program, 1% interest rate uh, over a period of, I think it's 20 years, uh, maybe a little longer than that, but a 1% uh, interest rate for a loan up to $20,000 for renovation assistance. Again, that's Strictly for renovation, bringing part uh, houses up to part, particularly where you may have health uh, a hazardous type of situation that exists uh, with a particular resident. Uh, the rural community development, rural community development is pretty broad, and I want to I want to move these back in in together. Uh, when you say the community on the community facilities and water sewer uh, program, uh, I was recently uh, reading an announcement today. Uh, by the secretary, and it was in reference to what has uh, come out uh, on the infrastructure legislation that recently uh, passed, or they're trying to finalize the clearance of that legislation right now. Uh, that will be a, a tremendous amount of revenue that will be involved in that particular infrastructure bill for both rural as well as for urban, urban areas, but particularly in dealing with rural. Everything from water sewer uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, community facilities uh, would be another area, and one that is, that is really really key for a lot of our small communities uh, is the technology side of it. Broadband is a big piece of it on infrastructure, and the intent of that legislation. And rural development is already doing a lot of work. As far as investments concerned, from the technology side, I don't know Arkansas is doing some uh, from that no, from on the technology end as well. I'm assuming that's back through the uh, state black grant programs. I'm I'm not sure about that one, but I know rural development has been a continue to do investments. You know, from that perspective, they have the what I call the the energy program, and I won't go into details on that. But anyone who have a specific interest. And need more information on that, I would get you uh, back with uh, rural development, uh, one of the rural development centers uh, in reference to uh, their, their energy program. But I will say this on the energy program, and it is uh, if you're going to upgrade uh, more your, say, air conditioning systems, uh, upgrade your home or your business to become more energy efficient, they do have a program for that that uh, will provide some subsidy support. Uh, in uh, implementing or applying that program uh, to individuals, providing that particular program service to individuals. Of course, I just gave reference to the e-technology, the technology aspect of it. It's big, it's very much so uh, needed, and particularly in the underserved areas. And I like to talk about it from an underserved community perspective uh, because, you know, we know pandemic has brought some of that out more so uh, than what it had been talked about in the past. But we have underserved communities that have not received the benefit 
of the uh, equal equity uh, type of investments uh, from a development perspective, from a community development perspective in particular. Community facilities. They also have the community facilities grant and loan program, uh, rural development does, uh, both for municipalities and with community-based or nonprofit organizations are uh, qualified for that particular program. I know we have organizations we've partnered with that's benefited from it, uh, as well as certain small municipalities uh, as well. Again, that's a that can be a grant loan, nor is a grant loan program. Uh, uh, and there has to be a match bar, could be 25%. And in certain cases, uh, you know, it has been in the past, don't know much so how it is now where uh, areas are qualified for a full grant. But it, it's a good program, particularly if you're working uh, with the state on accessing state resources along with USDA rural development resources uh, to uh, work with municipality, working with municipalities as well as a community-based organization uh, on facilities, uh, improving facilities. That's that's pretty much all uh, that I have, uh, uh, Mr. Crockett, on that. And again, uh, your rural development, uh, USDA rural development is a part of the USDA center uh, itself. And I don't know exactly where they're located in, uh, in Lono County uh, or in the Pulaski County area, uh, but they are there. That's that's for, that's for sure. But you can contact our office at 870-734-3005, and we can work with you directly, uh, either as an individual, as a partner, community-based organization, uh, the local leadership, uh, small towns uh, uh, as well. Uh, even by even in this manner, where we can make the arrangements. Uh, to connect by way of Zoom uh, as a client back with the agency and the service provider, uh, our staff person uh, that may be working uh, in that particular area that you have an interest in. Uh, Ms. Crocker, that's all I have on USDA role development. If there are any questions, I'd be more than happy to try to respond to them. Yes, sir. Um, and did you touch bases on air property? No, let me let me go to air property and I was yeah I'll touch bases on that I was going to do air property uh, with a question back to uh, farm service agency but let me just go ahead and do that uh, FSA okay. uh, farm service agency presently now has a program that has some missing sessions on the program and it uh, if there's a loan loan program that they'll be implementing or a relanding program they'll be implementing. Uh, to make financing available to individuals who have an interest in getting clear title on air property. When I say clear title, where it's undivided now, and that title may uh, presently be in the name of the parents or the grandparents or the great grandparents, uh, and you have heirs uh, that may not have an, have an, uh, an interest uh, in, uh, in the property and just want to just get the value of that interest out of the property. So this particular loan program would allow individuals who want to sell their interest, those individuals who want to keep the property out of the, the real estate, will be able to acquire financing through the relending program to purchase the interest of those individual heirs out, uh, which means if you have 25% interest and that one who has a 25% interest who want to sell, and uh, then they, you, you could buy that 25% from, from the other, uh, from that particular interest holder, if there are no other heirs that have an interest in buying it as well, giving you, you know, a much larger percentage, I'll say a 50% interest in that particular ownership of that property. Uh, and uh, say three of them out of the four want to sell the interest out, then uh, you will be able to get the option to purchase, to purchase that interest out and giving you 100% ownership in that property and get financing to do that at the appraised value of that particular property. Again, that's a, that's a new law legislation that is in existence right now. I had a, uh, a, a meeting last night with a city, CDFI, Community Development Finance Institution, bank that here in Arkansas, one of the largest uh, in, in the state of, not the largest in the state of Arkansas. And uh, we'll be meeting back with them uh, next week uh, by way of uh, Zoom meeting to have further discussions. Uh, and hopefully we'll have another listening session with USDA and with Farm Service Agency 
uh, itself and, and how this uh, this will possibly move, move forward. But here's what the, the very positive aspect of it uh, in, from that particular meeting, the very positive aspect of it in the conversation is that the head person for that CDFI basically said, you know, they will even at this point now make a loan or finance individuals to purchase the interest of other individuals out in an estate situation. They will make the loan. The one thing that they would have to have is the 100%, 100% of that estate or that real property as security. And basically that would mean that if you have three or four individuals or two individuals right now uh, that own 50% and you have uh, the other 50% that's owned by say 10 individuals and those 10 individuals want to uh, sell that interest or even if one of those 10 individuals want to sell that interest. If the other nine individuals would sign the uh, either the interest or the representation, that their interest, where they all if they all sign the loan document, the nine plus the two sign the loan document, uh, and they buy the other that one individual interest out, then they would make the loan uh, to finance buying that one individual interest out. So they would already do that right now. That is a work through process of either way you go with it. Uh, it, it does take some time. Uh, I will say this, and this is this is only what has been uh, the position of some of us in our discussions here with Arkansas Land and Community Development Corporation. In the in one of the listening sessions, we had a number of calls from both other nonprofit organizations, uh, both in the state and outside the state of Arkansas, regarding uh, the process for getting clear title. You know, should individuals uh, air those individuals who have air or interest in property get a loan to work through the process of getting clear title? And basically, our position right now, and we may be proven wrong, has been this. You should not get a loan to work through that process. Uh, first of all, you have to show how you're going to, you're going to repay that loan uh, based on the resources of what you'll be putting up as security. And if you don't have clear title and ownership to that particular uh, piece of property, then you're going to have a challenge there, uh, whether it's a real income uh, coming out of that property, whatever, use of, whatever the property is being used for. So. I get the point of this, you must have a plan, a very specific plan on repayment of the debt that is, will be incurred uh, either way you cut it, okay? Uh, but that process of getting clear time and ownership to the point of where they will make the loan, I was strongly suggested individuals, given community-based organizations such as ours and others uh, who have a feeling and have been doing this for a period of time and uh, all the heirs involved, there's also a, a document uh, that can be developed and it's a legal document by the state of Arkansas uh, and, and to work through that process on title ownership of property uh, to qualify for the, for the, for the lending. Uh, that's, I think I have uh, pretty much a couple what I have on that, on the, uh, on the air property piece, where we are right now. Okay. Very good information. Again, um, we were scheduled to go into uh, session four, um, our housing partnership. Um, and that's in a correlation with Miss Maria Beard, who is the director of housing for Pulaski County. Um, unfortunately, she was unable to attend tonight, but um, Dr. King, did touch bases on that briefly and as what we were planning to do as far as housing is concerned. So at this part of um, the seminar, I wanna segue over into your question and answer section. Um, I do see where I have some direct messages in chats um, and I'll go ahead and, and begin my questioning from there. Um, they are addressed to the presenters. Um, this question is for Mr. Williams. Uh, what is the process of finding out who the current owners of air property are? Um, the uh, we do the current owner if it's in the city, 
Maybe they have to go to the courthouse or somewhere, but we do have plat books and plat maps that are available here at the office in the county, you know, but okay. if it's in within the city limits, uh, they have to go to the courthouse and find that information out. Okay. Um, there was a question that asked about the information from Mr. Casey's presentation and if it would be available. Um, the answer to that question is yes. And Mr. Casey, if you could uh, forward me the information to those slides over, uh, I will get that out to you. Um, and I see that you said you wanted to provide that for your community. So uh, again, we'll get that over to you. In addition to that, um, this is also being recorded. So again, there will be a rebroadcast of it, um, which is why I asked everyone uh, again to put your information into the chat box so that everyone could see it and it could be on record. Um, going into the next question, this is for Mr. Casey. Um, on average, how often do farmers who need the program services apply for assistance? I think, and, and um, I, I'm, I'm going to take a stab at the answer because I'm, I'm, I'm not really clear on, on what the question is. You, usually what we find out is, you know, we, we try to get the word about programs out. And, and if people hear about a program and, and they can make a connection that it, it might help them, then we will we'll, we'll hear from them. And, okay, and really the, I was gonna say, I'll ask Mr. Rainey if, if we wanna kind of be more specific about it. Are you asking um, in terms of how many farmers who are already farmers need the, the assistance? Are they, are they getting approved? Are you asking about an approval rate? Um, are you asking about um, the the return in it? Is it a it's multifold? Um, so it's more of uh, asking for some farmers who may not even be aware of the program, like you said, gotcha. you're trying to get the word out. But I imagine that there are farmers who are operating who don't know about the services, yep. and on average, like what is the intake uh, percentage of farmers per year, quarter, uh, for those who are already farming and who know that they need the service assistance uh and then how many are approved um and then what's the awareness rate uh that's part of the outreach uh that i was uh, interested in so I, I don't know what those actual percentages would be so th those people who have been farming for several years and have been working with us um you know we they, they they're pretty much participating in everything they can because they they know they need to stay in touch with us and and to to be eligible for many of the programs uh, the individual has to do what's called acreage reporting and and so once a year and, and it in the, the deadline to do that to, to be not late was um was back in july is they'll report to us what they're doing in each field i'm planting crop this crop planting corn here and this is when i planted it and soybeans there or or I'm using these pastures for grazing or these pastures for hay. And, and so when people are reporting that acreage, when they have that contact with us, they're much more likely to hear about the programs. The primary source of outreach from our office here is gonna be our email newsletter. And, and so if people, if people get email and they'll read our newsletters, then they'll get information. And if they, if they don't do the email, then it's 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 going to be difficult for them to get it unless they're getting it through uh, a writ, you know through written uh, monthly newsletters from other organizations. And in the coronavirus food assistance, and and I I'm, I'm speaking with two years of experience with FSA, so I, I can't reach back ten or fifteen years and tell how it was before coronavirus. The coronavirus program brought a lot of new people to us who had no idea what we did. And, and I know that those coronavirus programs, they were put out by the published by the legislators, you know, the, the ones who had talk shows headed, it, it was everywhere. And we had people contacting us. And, and, and so that tells me that that outreach worked. It, it, may, it, it got to a lot more people. Um, but if they don't do email, you know, it's, it's probably going to be a challenge. I'll, I'll be honest with you, because we just don't do print much print newsletters anymore. To, well, we don't. We just don't do it. Yeah, thank you. Great question and great answer um, to that. And again, 
uh, why organizations like us are around is for that very reason too. We um, look to assist these agencies in making you all aware. And it's why we have these outreach meetings and seminars for your communities and counties. So, um, and, and speaking of, uh, I want to again apologize to those who are on the call. Um, I've actually received about 28 calls in reference to this meeting not being in person. Um, and be that as it may, um, I'm going to speak to Dr. King about it to see um, the proper way to address it because I do know that the community of Wrightsville is very interested in the information that we covered tonight. Um, if you are on the call, I encourage you in the meantime to tell your community about the meeting uh, and, and especially the fact that we have it recorded. Um, you guys can refer to our website as well as our Facebook page and other social media outlets. Um, in addition to um, e, our, our e-blast and email uh, that we're able to follow up with you all on. And we will make sure you get that content so that it is disseminated in your community. And again, um, things happen. COVID has everyone, I believe at this point, uh, rethinking, repositioning, and uh, again, changing the way we meet in general. So um, this is not a, a an issue uh, directly with the city, and I don't want people to be upset about it. Um, like I said, an adversary, what I want you to do is just make sure that you spread the word on it. And the next time that we do have it, we'll make sure that, you know, we uh, accommodate you all, um, not only virtually, but if you all are asking in person, um, again, that has to go back to safety guidelines. And your safety is first. This information is very important, but we want to make sure that we adhere to your safety. Um, and, and I have to say, I agree with the city of Wrightsville on making the call to protect your safety uh, and get that building clean thoroughly so that you guys can continue your daily operations. So again, um, very, very helpful information. Do we have anyone else out there that may have any questions? Or any more questions for our presenters before we let everyone go? Actually, yes, I, I, actually I want to do two things at this point. Uh, one for some clarity, and Mr. Casey, the gentleman asked the question. One was about sign up, the mission to sign up, and then people benefiting from the program. I'm gonna give one example, and, and we're we're going to republish some information that's coming out in our news bulletin, specifically that deals with the question that you asked. And this is with farmers of color, and it deals with the percentage base of those individuals who receive services from FSA in the loan program side. And, and I must say this, the ones who receive the less services in the application process with African-American population, it was African-American population, the highest percentage on, from the color was Hispanic population. And it goes on, I think the Asian was, uh, was, was the next uh, one. The, the, the highest percentage number, I think roughly 25% of those uh, applications that was withdrawn. Sometimes people withdraw their application for various reasons, not being able to get all the information that's required. So they withdraw their applications in certain program areas, be it in loan for a CRP program, you know, whichever. So, but we have some specific data that's coming out on that. It'll be in our next publication called our news bulletin that show those specific figures. Now, back to what Mr. Casey said as well, you know, it, it has been well defined that we have the underserved community, but outreach itself, he gave reference to the individuals and how they have now employed more, both within USDA, NRCS, FSA, and rural development is outreach services and partnering with organizations to provide outreach services to reach that underserved community. Uh, what Ashley gave reference to that is, that is that is what we do, and that's why partnership is so important. But let me say this: in order for us to maximize uh, the delivery of both the information and the services, we must build more on our partnership capacity. I mean, we have to partner more in Riceville and other local areas. And those in those local areas being a part of connecting the information that is being provided. 
And when I say connecting the information that you yourself and others, connecting the information that has been provided here this evening and connecting back, back to others who can benefit from it. I am hopeful, and I'm going to ask this as a question I ask you to uh, Mr. Mr. Casey on the CRP program. And I've just, we've just sort of looked at the overall rice field community. It's a very historic community as far as the African American population and South is concerned. Uh, but under the CRP program, is that a minimum acreage amount under the forestry conservation program uh, that one has to have uh, uh, to in order for them to qualify? Uh, for the program, I, I don't think that there's a minimum acreage requirement. We we have some CRP fields that are in in the single digit acres. Okay, and uh, you know, with 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 any program, I, I'd I'd say even if you're not sure if you qualify, call, and and that's what we're here to do is to see what you have and and help you. See if you're eligible. And, 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 and Mr. regardless K of the acreage. Oh. Yeah, and Mr. Casey, as well as back with uh, back with Mr. Williams, you know, I, I asked that question for this purpose. You know, looking at the Riceville area, uh, my understanding and our initial our pre-meeting there, one that's quite a bit of air property in there. So we know air property is the issue. We have to try to have that some work with the community and those individuals who have an interest in that. That's one. The second is getting the farm number. That's a program process, and uh, the other thing that that uh, uh, Mr. Williams gave reference to that all falls up under the program side with FSA. Those forms that have to be filled out, whether it's erodible land or things of that nature, or wetland, that falls up on the farm program side with FSA. But they partner back with NRCS as a partnership process, and the way that we work with the local community individuals on that. I'm working with a, a particular farm right now. Uh, today, uh, tomorrow, the full team will be there, both those with NRCS and Forestry Services, to because there's some wooded land that exists on this small piece of property. There's a water situation that's involved, and so there's some undergrowth that needs to be taken out to have, you know, as far as the, the tree is concerned, for better tree management and getting a forestry management plan on that. And that's only as an example. And I'll say that for those particular, uh, those in the in the Crawfordsville area, uh, no matter what the acreage is, small scale acreage, you get in contact with us. We want to work with you. The micro-urban farm, and Mr. Williams already said, they are doing micro-urban farm, and that's an economic development type of initiative, both for job creation, local food supply, food desert areas, uh, particularly uh, in, 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 in certain parts of Pulaski County. So it addresses both the food deserts and it allows individuals to generate revenue. Getting the farm numbers, uh, if it's not going on in the Riceville area and he's doing it in other parts of Pulaski County and Little Rock area, then we want to work with Riceville to begin an economic initiative with urban agriculture. We want to work with you on that. We want to follow up with you on that. We'll be following up with Mr. Williams. And I know Mr. Williams wants to do it. There's no doubt about that. You know, he wants to do it. I know the FSA wants to deliver the services. And in addition to on the on the on the farm program side, if you have an urban farm and you got the number and everything, you back to FSA again on the micro loan, the micro loan up to fifty thousand dollars. So if you have an acre, two acres, or whichever. Uh, three acres, and we work with you to develop those business plans to run that micro-urban farm, to access the financial resources, determine the basis of the feasibility of that, and the access to financing to establish and operate your micro-urban farm, both in equipment, NRCS, on conservation practice, the hoop house, all the resources are here. And we'll get back and bring you back in with rural development as well on community facilities and other housing. So I just want to say that, uh, Mr. Crockett, I think uh, Mr. Jones has a question too. This is for Farm Service Agency, uh, Mr. Casey, I believe. Uh, how long does it typically take to get a farm number if you're located in Pulaski County? So the, the, the process of getting a farm number is the, the process itself is not very long. If How long it takes is more dependent on 
on the programs that we have and the deadlines that we're fighting against. And, and right now, if, if, if someone contacted us about getting a farm number, you know, depending on the circumstances, it, it could take a couple of weeks and it could take a couple of months because we're, we're, we're just, we're backed up with a heavy workload now. And, and when it comes to our work, our, what we prioritize is, is the programs that are making payments to, to farmers, to help farmers. And uh, we, we try to get those done. And then if there's a deadline, you know, we, we, we stay in, I stay in close contact with Kennard and, and with the Lone Oak effort, uh, the NRCS as well. And if someone needs a farm number and their backs up against the wall with a deadline for NRCS, we'll get it out of here in time to, to get them in that program. So, so we, we do what we can uh, and, and sometimes it just takes a little while. Our, our goal is to get to where we can get them in and out of here in, 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 in a couple of weeks to a month or so, but, but we're a ways off from that. But well, this is my, my last comment, uh, Ms. Crockett. Uh, those of you who are in the Riceville area, uh, I know all of you have met Ms. Crockett by now, and she's still introducing herself to others, but she does represent Arkansas Land Community Development Corporation uh, for the central region as well as the southwest region. Uh, so if, if you are not seeing her or hearing from us, uh, please call my office and let me know. Uh, but I'm sure you're going to hear from her a lot, <laughs> but in, in no uncertain terms. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Ms. Ashley. Hey. Uh huh. Uh, this can hard. Uh, make yeah. sure that uh, contact information for me and Mr. Paul get out. Uh, yeah. Me and Paul, we work together well. I mean, we uh, like farm on track numbers, and I usually tell Mr. Paul what the deadlines and what we're trying to get accomplished because I know his workload and they throw some things. Yes. Owners at the last minute, there were deadlines and things we had to get 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 to, and so he kind of prioritized based on that. But make sure you get my information and Mr. Paul information out there. And if uh, farmers and producers want us to come out, like me, do a farm visit, we don't mind. So just tell them, give them a number and get give our information and give us a call. Perfect. Thank you guys so much for making yourselves available. And um, again. Uh, thanks everyone for participating. It wasn't what we thought because of last minute changes, but um, I am still able, I'm glad that we were able to get this information out and have a very productive meeting. I think it went very well. And you all uh, from the USDA, thank you, thank you, thank you again for your assistance because well, again, without you, um, we would have no job. We would have no purpose. So thank you so much for everything that you guys do. I will be following back up with the community of Wrightsville to get this information out to you, Mr. Rainey and others. Um, we hate that we did not get a participation from our mayor there, but ne uh, needless to say, again, I can understand why uh, we are really having to reposition ourselves with COVID. So I think we may do, um, and we will get the information out again. So again, until next time, uh, last time which will be pretty soon, um, I have to talk to Dr. King, of course, and y'all don't tell on me. So, but I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that we get we circle back around to you guys uh, at least before the end of uh, next month to adhere to some of the because I know that I, I've I've gotten so many passionate calls. So again, we're gonna we're gonna do all we can to help you. Um, we have our number available as well. You guys have our informational, and I will be um, resending out all of this information to. Sorry, guys, for all the. My twins in the background are, are doing their thing, but um, I will be resending this out to your community so you guys can have the, the information that we discussed tonight. All right, guys. Well, thank you again. You guys take care, and we'll see you on the next call. All right. Thank you. Have a right. good night. Okay, you too. Night. Thank you.